Welcome back to the Professional Learning Series on providing culturally responsive instruction for Native American students. This professional learning series includes the following sections. The what and why of culturally responsive instruction, understanding culture and Native American diversity, foundations for a culturally responsive practice, where to start, some initial guidelines for instruction, going further, more guidelines, pedagogical implications by subject area, and action steps towards developing a culturally responsive practice. This video focuses on pedagogical implications by subject area. The prior sections explored principles that apply regardless of subject matter. This video takes a deeper look at implementing culturally responsive instruction within various subject areas, starting off with math, science, and social studies. The recommendations here are based on research and theory that is specifically focused on these subject areas. First, we'll consider math. When implementing culturally responsive instruction in mathematics, it's important to set up authentic, relevant reasons for learning math. While this is true for all subject areas, because math is too frequently taught as disconnected abstractions, we bring it up here again. It is also helpful to use a range of representations so that students have multiple entry points for understanding the material, and to be clear, explicit, and direct with math terminology. In order to make the math learning authentic and draw on local knowledge, consider how math is used in the context of local native culture. For example, what systems are used for counting in the local tribe? While most tribes in North America use a base 10 system for counting, others use alternatives such as the Yuki of Round Valley in Northern California, who use a mixed base 8, base 16 system. Many other tribes such as the Nootka in British Columbia use a base 20 system Tribes also have a variety of resources for record keeping, such as tallies, used for example for noting the passage of seasonal cycles, and the Mayan system of bars, dots, and lubes. The lube is a shell design, which represents 5, 1, and 0, respectively. Another form for symbolizing numerals is the knotted cord. For example, the Inca used the quipu to calculate and communicate numbers with knots, which represent 1s, 10s, and multiples of 10. The Nootka also use knotted cords and bundles of sticks as mnemonic devices to keep track of numbers. Not all tribes still use their traditional mathematics system, but students can benefit from learning about both traditional methods and current ways that math is incorporated into the daily activities of the local community. Consider how you can integrate local traditional and contemporary uses of math into curriculum and instructional activities aligned to your content standards. Integrating these uses and contexts in students' math learning activates and validates the knowledge and experience students bring to school with them, helps students think about and solve meaningful math problems, supports students' understanding of how mathematics is related to familiar contexts, and extends notions of expertise beyond the academic arena. To support students' understanding that math is used and useful to everyday work, invite community members to speak in class about how they incorporate math in their work and daily lives. This shows students how math is relevant in daily life and in various roles. It expands the idea of who is knowledgeable about math and provides models students can relate to and envision themselves becoming. Next, we'll take a deeper look at science with a focus on biology. A study of children's books written by Native and non-Native authors demonstrates the pervasiveness of native ecological perspectives. The researchers of this study, Medine and Bang, found that non-native authors tended to depict animals outside of their natural habitats and behaving like humans, such as wearing clothes and walking and talking like people. This relates to the non-native children's belief that animals are like humans, but not the other way around. Native authors, in contrast, tended to depict animals in their natural habitats and with appropriate animal behavior. In teaching about the biological world, it's important to start with an ecological perspective, focused on how species within an ecosystem depend and impact one another. Incorporate the native perspective that people are a part of nature rather than apart from nature. Traditional native knowledge of the biological world emphasizes ecological relationships, focusing on interrelationships among species, such as how species and environmental features in a habitat are dependent upon one another. 
in a study by Bang, Medine, and Atron of how biological science knowledge compares between members of the Menominee tribe and a nearby rural non-native community in Wisconsin. Researchers found that even the youngest children in the study from the Menominee community, ages four through six, demonstrated the ability to use ecological reasoning or reasoning in terms of ecological relations. For example, using ecological reasoning a child might justify a generalization from bees to bears because a bee could sting a bear, or a bear might acquire an attribute from a bee by eating its honey. Among the non-native children, only the oldest could use ecological reasoning. Many of the non-native children in the study also could frequently not recognize shared traits between animals and humans if they first were introduced as traits in the animals. This asymmetrical reasoning is on the grounds that people are not animals. Menominee children were able to generalize across species, including humans, in a symmetrical fashion. They could see that humans may have some of the same traits as animals to the same degree that they could see that animals share human traits. Menominee children are precocious in terms of an ecological orientation, and 50% score at or above proficiency levels on NAEP's fourth grade science test, compared to the national average of 29%. However, by 8th grade, only 17% score at or above proficiency levels on NAEP, compared to the national average of 27%. Scholars posit that the disparity between children's biology knowledge and their science test performance as they get older is due to the conflict in practices between school science instruction and Menominee cultural practices. In other words, there is a disconnect between children's sense-making and the target disciplinary knowledge. Researchers theorize that student motivation and science learning are greater when community values, framework theories, activities, and practices are paralleled both in classroom orientation and curriculum-related values, structures, and practices. Historically, most science education starts with a study of model species, which exhibit the most salient characteristics of living beings. Then the curriculum slowly builds towards an ecological orientation. This learning pathway does not take into account Native students' habits of mind, nor does it leverage their existing biological knowledge. Additionally, when ecosystems are taught, they rarely include humans. This reflects a specific cultural belief system about humans and nature that is inconsistent with traditional Native perspectives. Teachers can also support student engagement by teaching science in a way that is relevant to students' communities and the socio-scientific challenges they face. Through science, students can contribute to the pursuit of possible solutions to community problems. For example, by exploring cutting-edge science related to microbial life and human health, planting practices and monarch migrations, or food security and adaptations in agriculture. Also, be aware of and treat appropriately the connections Native peoples make between spirituality and science. Knowledge that Native peoples have of the earth, animals, and people is tied to their moral and spiritual values. Check to see if any curricular materials are offensive or against spiritual or moral beliefs. For example, experiments on or dissections of animals. Now we'll take a look at social studies. Here are some things you can do in your social studies instruction to make it more culturally responsive to Native students. Teach from a multicultural perspective to include, for example, authors and worldviews from different cultures. Assure historical accuracy of events related to Native peoples. Allow time for Native American history and culture. Teach Native American contributions. Teach about tribal governments. Focus on both the past and the present. Teach about general history and culture related to Native peoples and the attributes of specific local tribal nations, including their history and contemporary contexts. Swisher and Tippecanoe State Negative stereotypes coupled with inadequate and inaccurate information about this nation's indigenous peoples, particularly in social studies curriculum, damages the self-concepts and subsequent behavior of our youth. When teaching about Native Americans, it's important to focus on both the past and the present. In a recent study of state social studies standards by Sarah Shear, she and her colleagues found that 87% of references to Native Americans in all 50 states' academic standards portray Native Americans in a pre-1900 context. This relegates the importance and presence of Native peoples to a distant past. 
she found that all 50 states lack any reference to current Native events or challenges. In an article by Elisa Landry in Indian Country Today, Shear states that in state standards, there is nothing about treaties, land rights, water rights, nothing about the fact that tribes are still fighting to be recognized and determine sovereignty. As such, teachers and schools need to do the work to ensure that this is included in social studies curriculum. Now for some exit questions. What are two ways that you can make your subject area instruction more culturally responsive? How can you incorporate local knowledge, community members, or cultural frameworks in an upcoming lesson? We are grateful to the following individuals for their contributions to these modules.